So our next, our next presentation is from uh, Sarah's own Christy Tiberi. Uh, so Christy is a senior advisor in the agency services team, uh, which uh, I manage. Um, uh, she spent many years with Sarah uh, working as a consulting archivist over in the GRR, the government records repository, um, and she's moved over and we're now benefiting from the years of experience and wisdom uh, that Christy brings. Uh, so she's here to uh, talk to us about the public office portal um, and give us a bit of a demonstration. So I'll hand over to you, Christy. Good morning, everyone. It is still morning, I see. So um, thank you all for taking the time. Um, we're quite excited to be able to show you the new public office portal, which many of you have probably heard us talk about. It's actually now live and open for business. So I'm going to run through the first part, show you the portal, how to get to it. Um, second part of this presentation, Catherine Robinson will be taking over to talk specifically be, about the RMAT process. So I'm just going to share my screen. Okay. You should be able to see the um, government record keeping page on our website. Yes. Okay. So in order to get to the portal, all you need to do is go to the government record keeping page of the website and click on services. Um, if you click on that, it will take you to the login page. Now I'm not going to log in on this page because this is actually our live portal. I'm actually going to take you into our demonstrator version. So So over the last year, we've been um, developing this online portal for public officers to use. So at the moment, it's ready to use for um, people who wish to register a new series or to request the transfer of some records. Um, the, we are transitioning away from our old traditional paper forms. Um, so we won't be requiring to complete these forms anymore, but basically, all the work will be done through the portal and we're expecting a transition period for that. So I've shown you how to access it from the website. I've shown you the login. So this is what you use presented with when you actually log in with your login. Now we'll be providing logins to people as needed um, and I'll put in the chat at the end just the agency services email address um, that you can contact us on if you are interested in actually being set up to use the portal. Um, so as you can see, there's three sections of the portal. Contact us. And I know I'm gonna get the little spinning dots of slowness. This will just send a, a um, email into us as Andrew just alluded to we using SharePoint for this. So you can put a message in sort of saying, you know, hey, I need some help with this part of the portal. It's not making any sense. It will come in, raise a case and the agency services team will get back to you. Self-assessment, so this is the part, it's not live yet. So if you click on this at the moment, it just basically says that the records management assessment tool will be available and coming soon. So I'll leave Catherine to talk about that. But the main bit I wanted to talk about was transfer. So the transfer part of the portal is live now. It went live at the end of January. We have got two public offices who have been set up for use. One of them is um, Transport for New South Wales. The other one is Department of um, Planning Industry, DPI, Department of Planning Industry and Environment. Um, obviously, we're going to be needing to manage administrative change after tomorrow, but for the moment, they're the two who have been using it. I've actually logged in um, and the material you're going to see here is actually the series of records that belong to State Archives and Records Authority that we're responsible for. When you log in, you will only see the series material that your agency is currently responsible for. So it's not like you're going to be able to log in and scan everything that DPI have or Transport have or DPC have. It'll just be tied to your agency. So we're going to just take it through the portal. We have got, when you click into transfer, there's three options. There's Series Explorer, which is basically going to have populated all of the series that your agency is currently responsible for. And we're hoping that this is going to be a really useful tool for um, agencies. 
so you can sort by number, you can search. Um, you don't need to put the NRS in, so it'll bring up the series. You can search by um, word, so. That right. Yes, it'll bring up any um, series that actually refer to thesaurus. So the first step will be checking if you're going, if you're planning on transferring records, if you haven't done it for a while, if you're not frequently doing it, checking to see if there is actually a series that's already been registered for use um, by SARA. Okay. If you've had a look and you've thought to yourself, hang on. The series of records I want to transfer doesn't exist. Um, you can use the portal to create a new series. So this actually replaces um, table one on the current transfer proposal form on our website. So I'll just show you anything with the rose asterisk is required. So I will just go through and show you how you would um, request a series. So in this one, I've basically just said this is what this proposed title is. This is one I prepared earlier, obviously. Um, start date is the only mandatory date that we have for this, so um, you can type it in. We're not requesting an end date because we acknowledge that some series are still in the process of being created. It's just sort of when the information started being created, which agency created the records. Um, there's a drop down system. So in our case, we've just got State Archives and Records Authority of New South Wales. If it's not populated, I can actually say, listen, it's not there and you can type one in. So just say I wanted to put in something like management office. Okay. Um, what's the format of the records? This is another drop down field. So um, I'll just say that this is paper. How are they arranged? Again, a drop down field. I say it's alphanumeric. And any special comments you want us to know about the series. So in this case, I've hit submit and you'll just get a message to say that your submission has been successful. Okay, if we go back now into this port, this um, case list, you can see that this new series request has been created and it appears as a case. It's got a status of new says who requested it and it says which team it's been assigned to in SARA to um, assess. So, okay. So that's create new series, but the thing that probably will be most relevant is transfer records. So this is going to do away with the forms as I've already mentioned. It's designed for both physical and digital. So it asks you at the outset, what kind of records that you're transferring. Um, And before you start, the system at the moment is not designed to um, start and stop a request. So what we're recommending is that people download the template to start with, which hang on, it's opening on the other screen, so I'll have to drag it across once it opens. Slowly. Okay. This is what the template looks like. So we're no longer asking for the NRS. We're no longer asking for which consignment we're up to. We're just asking for the container, the item number, the description, start date, end date, and the access direction. So this has sort of shrunk down our forms, but you will need to have this ready to go when you're ready to propose and request a approval to transfer. Okay, so I'd just save that into your system. It downloads as an Excel version, but it does need to be uploaded later on as a CSV version. And we do ask, you can't change any of the columns, add columns, change the titles, anything like that. So, 
Okay, so these um, declarations are currently on our transfer proposal form, so it basically just replicates that. Um, you can't move forward without ticking them, same as previously, anything with a res asterisk is a required field. Okay, authorising officer's name. Now we acknowledge that sometimes you may not be the authorising officer, you might just be the records person who has had someone, depending on your own internal delegations, who is actually authorising the transfer. It's got a drop down list of names here. I'm actually going to say Andrew is my manager and he's the one who's transferring this proposal, this transfer. But you still also have the option to say the person I want is not there and you can put their details in. Okay. Would you like to add, and we've already automatically captured your details because you're the one who's logged into the portal and creating this request. You do have the option to actually nominate a secondary contact officer apart from yourself. So if you know that you're going to be going on holidays or if you work part time and you're only in the office certain days and you're not sure when the records might be sent off or we might be collecting them, you could actually say, yes, I want to put a secondary contact officer in. If it's yes, put their details in. If it's no, I'm just going to say no in this instance. So this is where the Series Explorer and the request to create a series is important because you need to have that series number ready to progress further with the case. So in this one, I'm going to say that I'm transferring into Series NRS 18696. And it gives me the series title, so correspondence files from state records. Okay. It's... Um, for the disposal authority, it's a drop down. So we're just asking for which disposal authority you're using at this point. In this case, I'm saying it's um, 402. We have put a note here to put the actual specific class in the comments box before, below. This is something we might enhance in the future, but at the moment, we're just asking for you to actually present the information in that way. Um, this one I'm saying is paper. Container type, type one boxes. Comments, have I got any specific comments I want to put in about this? No, not really. And then we ask for the collection address. So in this case, I'm going to say it's coming from I'm going to say it's at Kingswood. I'm going to say that this operation name is Sarah. This is here in case we're actually collecting records from a, um, if for example you're part of um, DPI, we might be collecting records from a specific office, not necessarily from head office. So that's why we've got organisation name there. We've also got the ability to put in a floor or level. I'm just going to leave that blank. We've got the option to put in delivery instructions and um, the delivery instructions for that are um, please deliver to the workroom Tuesdays only. Okay and then once you've done all of this you've put in all your details we upload the actual um, consignment list. So I'm going to hit upload Here's one I've prepared earlier. I hit next. And again, you get that submission successful notice. Um, that actually will now also appear down here in your portal cases. I actually might default them so it's sorting the most recent case first. So it's basically saying that you've requested a physical transfer on this date at this time. Um, we have found with agencies, DPI in particular, we've had a couple of people from their team who've been requesting and everybody's requests are showing up here so you can see what is happening across the team. Um, I don't think we've really got time for any questions but I'll finish up this now and I will throw to Catherine but I am happy to take questions at the end if we end up with some time. Okay. Thank you, everyone.
Hi everyone. Um, uh, it's good to see everybody after so long. Um, we haven't had a forum for a couple of years now. Um, I'm going to share my screen so you can see the monitoring portal as it is at this point in time. So just bear with me. Um, okay, can everybody see that? Can somebody send me a, a little thumbs up? Okay, um, unfortunately due to circumstances beyond our control, the new monitoring portal is not going to be ready for you to use from tomorrow to load your submissions. Um, so we've actually made alternative arrangements for you for lodging the submissions and I'll go through those details shortly. But what I wanted to do while we were in the portal is just show you some of the prototype screens um, so you can get a sense of what's coming and what will be available for you to use from next year. So the screen we're actually looking at right now is where you will lodge your submission next year. So this is a prototype. So you'll go to this screen um, and then when you click the next button, it will actually collect details about your organisation and who's making the submission. And then as you can see along here, you've got all the questions from the RMAT. And I'm not going to go into all of those because that will take ages. Um, but what I wanted to do is actually show you what happens after you've made your submission. So this is the screen that I'll be able to see um, as an administrator of the portal. Um, now we've obviously been playing with some data and um, to test some of these reports out. So no one get excited if you see the name of your organisation. This is just dummy data for us to play with. So this is just to give you a sense of the dashboards that I'll be able to see in terms of how individual public officers are travelling, who's actually responded to the request for submissions at any point in time. Now, what will actually be happening later is the opportunity for public officers to be able to access the portal from July to get reports on um, how their submission looks and obviously also um, benchmarking against the aggregate data that we've been able to collect as part of the monitoring exercise process. Um, so during May, June, we'll be loading data into the portal and making it available to you at the beginning of July. So what you'll be able to do is come into the portal. You will only be able to see your organisation's um, submission. You won't be able to see anybody else's submission, um, but you will be able to look at your submission in relation to the aggregate data or the aggregate results of the monitoring exercise. So just to give you a look of what that potentially is going to look like, here is one of the prototype reports. Um, okay, it's just taking a minute to load. So this will look very similar. So this is one I cooked up the other day for the purposes of demonstration. So this test report looks very similar to what you'll find right now in the results tab. So um, just going through the three categories with the question, the response that's been provided and obviously what level. And then over here on the right hand side, you'll get the category, uh, you'll get the percentage for the category. So for instance, 88% for the information management category. Now, just um, popping back to my homepage, um, a second report that we've already started to develop for you in the portal is loading right now. And this also looks familiar um, if you've looked at the results tab. This is basically the bar graph of where you're sitting above or below the baseline of level three. Um, so just a very quick snapshot um, of where things are um, and the scores down below. So that's, that's basically where we're at with um, the development of our monitoring portal. But basically due to circumstances beyond our control, well beyond our control, um, we haven't been able to finish the work on the portal. Um, so we don't want to obviously start it half finished. Um, so we're making the alternative arrangements for you um, for lodging those submissions. Um, Irene, could I have my slide, please? I've actually got a, a slide for you to look at for the um, monitoring exercise. So. The monitoring exercise starts tomorrow 
um, and it's going to run through the whole of the month of April. And what we're going to do, because the portal's not available, we're actually going to ask you to make your submission via an online form. And um, that the URL for that online form will be sent out to you tomorrow. So you'll receive an email from us tomorrow, um, should be in the first half of the day, um, and we will provide you all the details about making your submission. Now, as we've advised in the past, this recommencement of monitoring after a break of nine years is actually challenging for many organisations. And, and we recognise that many of you are concerned about making reports. Um, so all we can ask of you is that you commit to making a comprehensive assessment of your organisation and make your best efforts to submit a response. And as I've said to a number of organisations over the last month, please don't be worried if your um, results are sitting below a level three. What we want is an open, honest response from your organisation. Um, the world is not going to fall in on your organisation if, if your response is below a level three. What we want is an accurate, honest answer to how you're travelling um, in relation to the particular questions. So what we want you to do is to download the RMAT spreadsheet from the website do your assessment using that spreadsheet. And then th that basis then is for what you put in to the online form. You don't need to send your spreadsheets to us. You just need to put the data into the online form from that spreadsheet. Now, um, the form will actually ask you some preliminary questions. So what organisation are you? What's the name of your SRO? If you're not the SRO, but you're submitting on behalf of the SRO, who are you? So if there's any problems, we know who to actually make contact with after we receive the submission. So there's just some introductory information. We're also asking about the type of organisation that you are. So are you a council? Are you a university? Are you an agency, etc.? So that we can actually cut the data so that you can benchmark against similar types of organisations. Then we'll actually take you through the form into the RMAT questions. So all 19 questions are in the form. There's a space for you to provide comments and also to identify evidence. This year, you don't actually have to provide evidence. You don't have to identify the evidence, but if you would like to start identifying the evidence, then please go ahead and use that space and put some information in there. But it's not a mandatory requirement for this year. And completing the form should take you 30 minutes or less. Um, it's not huge. Um, and basically, we will be looking at publishing the results from the record keeping monitoring exercise in the first quarter of next year, next financial year. So um, getting everything ready and publishing um, hopefully in July, you will be able to actually use the portal from July to actually look at your report and um, look at how your organisation is performing against um, the aggregate data. So doing a benchmarking against similar types of organisation. And I will reiterate yet again, no public office will be mentioned or identified in the aggregate reporting. It will just be agencies uh, performing at this particular level in this re regard or this question. There will be no public office actually identified in that aggregate reporting. Now, to assist you in um, the monitoring exercise, we've created a new FAQ page and that's up on our website. You can always contact the record keeping standards team at the GovRec email address, so govrec at records.newsouthwales.gov.au. Um, and I would just also like to reiterate Adam's earlier comment um, that we really appreciate your cooperation with this exercise. And if there's any assistance or help you need, please feel free to get in contact with the record keeping standards and advice team. Um, is there any questions? I think we have a short time left for questions if there's time for a couple. Uh, there, have, there have been some, but I haven't responded directly to in the okay. comments. Okay, because I, I can't read the, the chat and talk at the same time. <laughs> 
No, 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 that's okay. No, I wasn't expecting you to. Um, uh, so there, there has been some, there has been some about um, reports uh, which I've responded to directly. Um, I guess I'll just, um, just aside from you, Catherine, just make a general comment and, and sort of reflecting back on what Gillian had said around, you know, what, what they're doing with Microsoft 365 in terms of experimenting and trying new things. So this is very much, um, this is very much us trying something new in a different method than we have in the past. Um, so while there are probably broad requirements that we have captured um, in the consultation that we've done that will be built in, we are absolutely open to feedback around any of the components, whether it be Christie's transfer process um, or how the RMAT is submitted, the reports uh, that can be generated and viewed and the type of insights that public officers would like to get out of it. Uh, you know, we are completely open to, um, mm -hmm. you know, to, to getting that feedback to make sure that it's not just us getting value out of these exercises, it has to be valuable for the customer as well. Um, uh, so there was a there was a question just clarifying uh, some, I guess, administrative things. So that there was one from Joe, um, and just correct me if I'm wrong, Catherine, because I think it's just dates. Um, so yep. so from tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Um, it is not an April Fool's open. Day joke. <laughs> no. Um, so from tomorrow, submissions will open, and you, everyone will receive an email around how those submissions can be made um, through the through an online form. Um, and then Kathy just missed a bit, I think. Um, in terms of the Excel or the Word form, you can do either. Um, preferably don't send either of them to us um, and use the submission uh, method that we send out to you. Um, mm -hmm. There is a question down here about, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, I believe we need another assessment for a business unit level. The RMAT is great for agency level, but too high for business units. It would be great to have a tool for business units to assess the information management. Um, I don't know if you want to make a comment on that, Catherine. Um, I was just going to say thank you, David. Um, that's something that we can discuss further. Um, the RMAT was actually developed so that it could be used at a business level. Um, obviously, there's some questions that you would auto populate because they're things that are set at an organisation wide governance level, but there's definitely questions you can drill into um, for the performance and maturity of a business unit. But yet we can have a talk about that in further detail in terms of what are you actually looking for to measure at a business level, business unit level? Is there different things that you're looking for that aren't in the RMAT? Thanks, Catherine. I think, um, yeah, just, just around sort of um, how they're managing their, their information and, and right. sort of, yeah. you know, business rules and, and what systems they're using. And I think sort of that sort of, yeah. those sort of questions of what comes to mind. Yeah, I think, yeah. yeah, I think some of that is actually, it's, it's really drilling down into um, performance of um, yeah, performance of a unit against a business rule, which yes, the RMAT is a little bit higher in its its scope, but I think um, having checklists, um, and this is one of the things that we want to do with the monitoring um, monitoring record keeping performance website page, is actually give you some more tips on that page about actually monitoring down at that um, coalface level in a business mm. unit, yep. so that you can then report it up through your RMAT. Great, so, thanks. Lots of things coming. <laughs> Great. Thanks, David. Uh, Anyone else? Yep. Yeah, so, uh, so there's a there's a question from Kim. Good luck. Um, will the reporting be an annual event? Yes. Yes, this will be happening every year. Um, this is the first one we've done in nine years. Um, we used to do regular annual reporting, um, and unfortunately, we had to take a break. Um, so we're recommencing this year. Next year's report, our monitoring exercise is likely to occur in March rather than April. Um, but obviously we will give you plenty of warning about deadlines and when things are coming up um, for scheduling purposes. Um, but yeah, definitely annual. And there's and, a, and I, oh. sorry, there's a question from Frank. Um, uh, I yeah, I, Frank. I will contact you offline and give you a rundown and an introduction to all of this. So yeah. um, I'll be and, in touch later. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and and look, and I think that I think that goes for everyone. You know what? You know this this probably goes 
you know, back back at least a year. Um, and, and I acknowledge we haven't had one of these forums for a while, although Catherine has been discussing this topic for some time. But this this really is an exercise starting at the high level. You know, we've we've chosen a place to start. Um, you know, for, for us, you know, trying to develop evidence-based policy around government record keeping and, and what works and what doesn't work um, is really hard to do when you don't have any evidence about what's effective and what's not. Um, so this, so, you know, acknowledging some of those those challenges about using the RMAT at lower levels, um, but, but that is, you know, things that we have in the pipeline to develop in terms of the guidance about how that can be done. But also, you know, once, once we have, well, I mean, this first year's worth of reporting and, and potentially a second year's, um, you know, you, you will start to get an idea about what those trends are, uh, you know, what are the what are the consistencies between between the different levels of reports? You know who, you know what sort of areas need more assistance? What are the hot button issues? Um, mm. You know mm. at a at a jurisdiction wide level, um, because I acknowledge that everyone who's turned up today, um, you know is is probably already doing much better than than some of those public officers that you know aren't as engaged. Um, but thank you both, Christy and Catherine, uh, for that. Um, like I said, for the others, there are some questions that we didn't get around to, so we'll. Um, take them off and, and do our best to respond to them um, after the meeting. Okay. Uh, so now there's thanks. just, yeah, thanks. 